previously at New Perspectives Music World Headquarters. Welcome to the exciting conclusion of my first baritone guitar build. Um, if you didn't see the original video, I'll put a link here on the screen, but you can see in the first part I created this clear acrylic body and I made this custom two-part pickup, kind of like a P-Bass pickup. And now in this video, I'm going to make the neck and the fingerboard. And I'll put a little bit more time into showing you the process that I, I use nowadays um, since we're focusing on just the neck. And uh, I tend to start with making uh, the fingerboard. Here I'm using a piece of reclaimed EPAY decking. And you can see I have uh, my CNC files all designed in Vectric. Uh, I carve out the, the basic radius. I have a 16-inch radius on this one. Fill in these uh, inlays with epoxy and then carve it again to get the excess epoxy off. Now sometimes you'll see when I do it this way that there's a little bit of bleed of the tinted epoxy into the grain of the wood. Um, you could prevent this by sealing the wood first before doing the epoxy with like, you know, a shellac or something and then doing it all again. But I don't do that because I don't want to use those chemicals if I don't have to and use all that excess material. So I just let it bleed a little bit. It sort of goes with that rustic look. Because I have it, I even use the CNC to cut my fret slots. And here you can see I'm using a 0.021 inch end mill and I'm cutting these fret slots to 0 0.08 inches deep. And uh, it's a slow process. you got to go slow and just do little little baby bites because otherwise you will break that <laughs> end mill real easy. It's so thin and small. Um, and then I just, you know, cut the fingerboard out and it's ready to go. And you remember from last week's video that I did a slight fanned fret. I have a 27 and a half inch low B string and the high B string will be 27 inches long. So there's a slight angle to the frets that straightens out when it gets to the bridge. The neck is not reclaimed wood, it is locally sourced ash. I got it from a local tree cutter who actually has a small mill and mills up the trees that he cuts down that he can save. And uh, you can see I can do hand work while the CNC is working, one of the things I love about it. And you can also see that I'm batching it out. I was making a couple other necks for some other instruments at the same time. Sometimes I make my top inlays like wraparounds to make side position markers as well. Um, but sometimes I do this where I save all the little pins out of my uh, rivets that I use my pop rivet stuff. I, those little aluminum pins and I, and I put those in. They give a nice sort of metallic look. And I also, as you can see, I stagger them. I kind of went up and down on those because trying to get them straight is kind of hard. <laughs> so sometimes I intentionally make them like zigzag a little bit instead of trying to get a straight line. Uh, and then it was ready to glue it together. When I do see and see these out, I have these little tabs that I have to leave on so the neck doesn't fly out when it's getting cut out. And um, you see it just comes off pretty quickly uh, with just a hand plane. And there's always a little bit of sanding to do anyways. I'm changing my order a little bit on this one to see how this worked for me. Now, normally I would put the frets in the fingerboard before I put it on the neck, which runs some risks of sort of like warping and changing the shape. But um, I find this a little bit easier to do. And this time I glued the neck on first. And I used these uh, nippers to sort of snip a little bit of the extra tang off of the end of the frets so I can get a nice clean looking edge when I put it in. Here's another step of the process that's a little bit different for me. Uh, normally I don't use super glue unless I need it. I just do a pressure fit on the frets, but they were a little bit loose this time, and I'm honestly not quite sure why. And so because they were a little bit loose, I put a little bit of CA glue in there first. Then I used my fret press to press the fret into place, and I locked my drill press in place there, which is a little bit of pressure on it, to sort of hold it still for a minute while the super glue... I got a chance to do his thing. As you say, I went and got a cup of coffee. I came back to the next one, did some sanding on something else, back and forth. And then this is a step that uh, you you really need to <laughs> have faith in yourself because it's easy to screw something up by using a power sander to sort of sand down the edges of the frets. But I do start it that way, and I put a little bit of a bevel on there on my belt sander. Uh, again, do this at your own risk. You can very quickly and very easily mess up your... <laughs> <laughs> your neck doing that uh and then uh the, you know where those little bits of uh bleed out of that ca glue i just scraped that off with a razor blade before i finished the whole thing and i finished it with just a little bit of um uh what is that linseed oil and then i did actually spray a clear coat on this one um which i don't always do so now it's time to level the frets and it doesn't matter how good you are at putting the frets in you're gonna have to level them and have a you know few that'll be a little high here and there it's just sort of the nature of the game and so I went through with my my new uh, square rocker and uh, got some of the high ones down first and then I used my traditional you know sanding and leveling tools to uh, clean up the rest of the frets 
This is like a fret crowning file that I then use to uh, sort of round them off again because there might be a little bit of flat spots here and there from uh, sanding them down. And then you want to make sure that there's no uh, sharp corners there to catch someone's finger. Then of course I have to sand and polish the frets when I'm done doing all this. And uh, this is a roll of plastic little like dog poop bags, believe it or not, that are all rolled up in tape that I use with sandpaper from 400 grit up to 3000. And uh, what I like about it is it can kind of contour over the frets instead of using my finger and getting it stiff or whatever. Now usually here I would use um, sort of like a, a buffing blocks that they use uh, at nail salons, believe it or not. Um, but since I had this neck off and wasn't on the instrument, it's not a neck through, I figured I'd just go over to my buffer and buff it out, which is a pretty common way to do it. And as you can see, that gives you a nice, nice shiny finish there pretty easily. Normally I laser etch my logo right into the headstock, but on this instrument I thought it'd be fun to mess around with the acrylic a little more. And so I cut out on the CNC in a spot to inlay this piece of acrylic that I emblazoned with my logo and the name of this model, which we'll talk about later. Here's a little trick. You might notice that your socket set won't fit over the guitar tuner with the socket wrench in it, but it will if there's no wrench in there and you just tighten it by hand. Never use an impact driver to bolt your neck to your body. Do as I say, not as I do. Because of the fan frets and the angled pickup, it was not as clear where the center of the pickup was. I couldn't just use my center square tool inside that hole. So instead what I did is I used the ruler to trace down the lines of the neck, like the angle of the neck down onto the body, and, uh, and then use my center tool between those two lines that I drew out to find the center. And I checked it all like a gazillion times before drilling it in and running my wires and screw holes and stuff. I did just a basic volume tone setup, but I did put a kill switch in because I, I really like kill switches. And um, like I had mentioned in the first video, I had to cut all the way through the body to make room for the electronics, so that's why there's that back plate. I'm a big fan of zero frets, and most of my instruments have them, so this one is no different. And I just used a piece of scrap ebony I got from my friend Off Your Rocker Woodworks, who works at a local harpsichord factory, believe it or not. He gave me a whole bunch of these little cutoffs. And that's just a pencil that I have cut in half so I can lay it flat against the frets to uh, draw out the basic shape, cut it on a scroll saw, and then rough it in from there. Seemed like a good place to start for my first set of baritone strings. I strung her up and got her basically set up, but I do need to still go in and do a better setup job. I like to let it sit under tension for a little while before I do that. And I was having a really hard time trying to photograph it inside, so I took it outside to the jambulance where I could take advantage of some natural light instead. So now let's hear it.
I get why people are into baritone guitars. It's so much fun playing it. Um, I like the I like the sonic range of it better than the guitar. You know, like the highs aren't quite as high and it goes just a little bit lower and deeper. You know, being a bass player myself and being kind of into bass sixes, uh, this makes perfect sense for someone like me. I also like that I made the nut just a little bit wider than maybe even a lot of other baritone guitars uh, to give my big bass player hands a little more room for making chords down there. Uh, the whole thing feels really nice it's a nice range to play in uh there's a couple things i do differently on it if i were to make another one uh first off i wanted to mention the name the jet screamer i had asked in the last video for some name suggestions and there are a lot of great ones but a lot of them revolved around the jetsons uh because of some of the things about the looks and stuff and so jet screamer was the musician on the jetsons that judy was infatuated with he was like the elvis and so that seemed like a pretty good name for it and uh, i forget who suggested it. it it was in the comments uh thank you very much i love that um so next time i, I make one of these I, I probably improve the way i did the inlay uh to make it a little bit more legible um the, i need to make the font bigger so i can get more paint in there you know and the pickup i love uh the sound of it and i love the look of it um but it is a, a little bit it was hard to get in um, I have to make it so it can kind of, you know, be one solid unit before it goes in. I thought it'd be okay to just put it in like two pieces, like a P base, but it wasn't really working out good and lining up right. So I have to make some improvements on that in the future um, and just the, the overall construction of it. But I think it's a really cool look and I'll probably make some more of them. I hope you enjoyed this little journey with me. Uh, make sure to check out all my other stuff. Um, I'm doing this all the time. So <laughs> thanks a lot and be good.